A very real challenge for business people or individuals making investments is, how do I value this investment? I often see individuals looking to purchase franchises ignore the basic question of valuation as they supersede good judgment with hopes and aspirations. Let's take a close look at this on this Safe Insight for August 12, 2014. Valuation is at the heart of any investment. Whether it's putting money away in a savings account, an insurance plan, 401k, or buying a piece of equipment or a business, how you value your investment means a great deal on why you do it and what you expect from it. Valuation, therefore, has become a big business for consultants who try to put genuine valuations on all types of things. But as you go forward with building your capital or you're thinking about buying a business, Consider these three core ideas of valuation before you leap. The first value you can ascribe to anything is the asset value. That is to say, in an open and competitive market, what is the real value you can get if you sell that asset? Cash investments, well, you get dollar for dollar, right? Houses and real estate, you get an asset value based on a highly liquid and competitive market. As you move into different assets like companies or stocks, the value you receive for that asset is defined by the book value per share. In other words, if the company liquidated, how much would you receive for the share of assets you own? But when you look at assets that are used to create productive activity, rental real estate, for example, or equipment or a company stock, the value of that asset is oftentimes set on our next measure. The income or cash flow spun off from the asset you're acquiring is the second method to value your investment. Let's say in the first case, I'm going to buy a rental asset for $100,000, and that asset will generate $10,000 per year in income. Assuming there's no liability on the asset, what is that $100,000 asset worth? Well, first, the $100,000 that you paid is set by the marketplace. Second, the $10,000 you received represents a 10% return on that asset. Now that's relatively easy to compare with other possible investments. However, what about a piece of equipment or a franchise fee of $100,000 from which you expect to enjoy a much larger income stream? In this case, say $50,000 per year or 50% as a return. Now in theory, as you're generating that $50,000 cash stream from your investment, you could argue that on an earnings basis, your asset has risen now to a value of $500,000 which makes that $50,000 a 10% return, just like our first investment, they're equal. The challenge here is not only to forecast the cash stream that you're going to expect, but also the risk, of course, that it won't happen. It may seem suboptimal to invest $100,000 in a savings account earning 1% a year or $1,000 until you think for a minute that that same $100,000 invested in a franchise that is supposed to make $50,000 a year may never happen and your $100,000 can go to zero. So valuing things on a cash flow basis must take into consideration the risk that those cash flows won't continue. The third measure is what can be thought of as a strategic acquisition. That is to say that by investing a certain amount of money to buy an asset, the addition of that asset to your business will so dramatically improve your business that the value of the asset is way over the actual cash it will generate. An example here is a company buying a brand. The actual brand may have little or no value on its own, but when added to a company's distribution and marketing power, that brand may have enormous value. In life, there's a concept called synergy, which can best be described as one plus one equals three. Where there is financial synergy in business, there is a good investment opportunity. Now we've oversimplified these things for today and there's much more that can be learned about valuation, but do not be dismayed. Sometimes the basics are enough to help us make the right decisions as we are forced to think through the right issues.